It's 29 degrees outside, and for the fifth night in a row, Shadow and I are heading outdoors in an effort to image Mars. We made about every mistake you can make in the first four nights, and we'll share those with you in hopes that you can avoid doing the same. But I think we've got it figured out, and tonight we're going to go out and give it one more try. Mars is particularly challenging to image in, say, comparison to Jupiter. Although it's closer to Earth than Jupiter, it's darker and much smaller. Here's an image that I took of Jupiter a few months back. That was a relatively easy image to capture in comparison to Mars. Let's go outside and attempt to capture Mars. Are you up to it? It's a good thing you have a good thick warm coat on. We're going to be imaging tonight with the 10 inch Dobsonian F4.7. Very fast. It's a light bucket, and it's ideal for imaging planets. A Dobsonian is not great for deep sky objects because it can't attract and accommodate for the field rotation of the Earth. But for planets, it's ideal. One of the other things I've learned is that it's really difficult to focus on the planet. So I slew to a nearby star, and I use uh, the focusing mask, the Batstoff mask, and... I've got it in focus now, so I'm going to go back to Mars. So there's Mars right there. Let me tell you a mistake I made the first night. That has to do with the histogram. You want to hit that little reset button and leave the histogram alone. If you use the histogram like you would on a deep space object, when you take your video footage and you go to process it, you find it'll be too dark to do anything with. So, unlike deep space objects, you just leave that. Mistake number two, which ruined the second night. You see this little timestamp right there, timestamp frames? Make sure that's off. I had inadvertently somehow set it to on. And if you have that on, each subframe will have a timestamp. And when you go to stack, the software will try to stack to that. It messes everything up. Maybe there's a way to edit that out before stacking, but I don't know how to do that. I just threw up my hands on that night and said, okay, lesson learned. Uh, make sure you set your frame output to SER, SER file format. So now I'm going to go ahead and come up here where it says capture area and I'm gonna pick a smaller capture area maybe in the 800 times 600 range and then you can see it pops up right there now I need to slide that over to make sure that Mars is in the middle of it when I shrink the region of interest down uh, it allows me to take faster subframes so when I reduce the region of interest, the frame rate goes up. I don't understand why. If any of you know, please comment, because I would like to know. So one of the things about Mars is that it's moving rapidly. It rotates on its axis at about the same rate as Earth. Earth rotates once around in 24 hours. Mars is really close to that. And then, of course, it's rotating around the sun as the Earth is. And so the com combination of all of that uh, motion it means that we have to take very fast exposures in order to capture Mars with any detail. Well, if I look tired, it's because I am. Uh, we ended up going six nights to perfect our image of Mars. In night five, the scene conditions got worse. Mm -hmm. Oh, bless you. Uh, but in night six, we prevailed. The follow was a short slide presentation to uh, summarize the mistakes we made and the things we did right, and then we're going to show you the final image. The first night I made the mistake of using the histogram as though I were imaging a deep space object. For me, resetting the histogram and leaving it alone works best. In night two, I made the mistake of not turning off the timestamp. That's an easy thing to overlook, so don't forget to make sure the timestamp is turned off. 
In night three, I made the mistake of using a camera I use for deep space objects. Although it's a great camera, it cannot accommodate a fast enough frame rate for planetary imaging. I switched over to my far less expensive planetary imaging camera that I usually use for auto guiding and had much better results. In night four, I didn't make the region of interest, the capture area, small enough and the frame rate was too slow, even though the camera was capable of a faster frame rate. I learned that reducing the region of interest would increase the frame rate. In night five, the mechanics of what I did were fine, but the scene conditions weren't great. Atmospheric turbulence and other factors can cause great distortion when it comes to planetary imaging. Finally, in night six, we learned from our past failures, scene conditions were good, and the resulting image I was pleased with.